Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. After I made some videos of register programming with STM32 F4 series, a lot of you guys requested the same for the F103 also. Blue Pill is a very popular device from ST, so I have decided to create a video for the basic setup on STM32 F103 C8. This video will cover the basic clock setup and timer setup, for the delay in micro and milliseconds. I can't continue making separate videos for different microcontrollers for each topic, so I will just continue making videos for F4 series, but I will also include the code for F103 in the final download. Mostly the things will be same, but I will comment the code properly, for better understanding. So today we will cover the clock setup and the timer setup to create delays. So let's start by creating a new project in Kyle IDE. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Select the controller here. Now we will only select the CMSYS core, and the device startup files from here. Let's first add the main file to this project. Inside this main file, I am creating the main function, and a while loop. So this completes the basic setup. Now, first of all we will include the device header file. If you see inside the file, here you have all types of registers, interrupts, and pretty much everything is defined here. Before going forward, let's include the libraries. Copy them inside the project folder. And inside the project, add those files. You can see the files got added here. This delay header file have these functions, that we can use anywhere in our main file. We will talk about them in a while. Let's include the delay header file in our main. Now we will set up the clocks first. This process was quite difficult in F4 series, but here it's pretty simple. We just need to call this function, system init, and we are done. Let's see what's going on inside it. So system init is predefined in the core files, that we included in our project. It does all the operations that we did in that F4 series video. Even though everything is predefined, you still have some control over the clocks. If you go to the top of this page, here you see the different clocks are defined. You can uncomment the clock, that you want to set. By default it is 72 MHz, and this is the maximum clock that Bluepill can run with. I am ok with this setup, and I will leave it as it is. Note here that, if you comment out every clock, then the system will run at internal clock, also known as HSI, high speed internal oscillator. So choose the clock according to your requirement. If you want any other setup, other than these predefined ones, you need to follow my other video, in which I covered the clock setup for F4 series. The steps will be same with minor changes of course. This is it for the clock setup. 
Now before going into timer setup, let's see the clocks with Cube MX once. This is how the current clocks are configured. We will come back to this. Now let's see the delay.c file. As you can see here, I am using timer 2 to create delays. Here are the steps given to configure the timer. We need to enable the timer 2 clock first. Then according to the requirement, set the prescaler, and the auto reload register values. And finally enable the timer, and wait for the confirmation. Let's take a look at them now. In order to enable the timer clock, we need to see the RCC register. To be precise, RCC APD1 enable register. Here you can see the bit 0 of this register enables the timer 2 clock. So that's what I did, I am writing a 1 in the 0th position. These commented lines here are the default setup for timer. As they all are zeros, we don't need to write them, but anyway I have commented the code, so that you can understand what they mean. Now we need to set the prescaler and auto reload register. Prescaler divides the timer clock, and it is used to reduce the frequency of high peripheral clocks to whatever working range you want. Before setting the prescaler, we need to understand the clocks. Basically the timers are connected to the peripheral clocks. Blue pill have two peripheral clocks, APB1, and APB2. As you can see here, the APB1 timer clock is running at 72 MHz, and so does the APB2 timer clock. Since all the timers are connected to these clocks, all the timers will also be running at 72 MHz. But this is too convenient, what if you have some different setup here? To know the timer clock, you need to know where the timer is connected. To know that, look at the datasheet for your device, and there you will see this clock diagram. As you can see here, the timer 1 is connected to the APB2 clock, and timer 2 is connected to the APB1 clock. Similarly you can see the other timers also. As I am using timer 2, which is connected to the APB1, and which is running at 72 MHz. This means my timer clock is also 72 MHz right now. Now a prescaler of 72 will further divide this clock, and bring it down to 1 MHz. We need to write minus 1 here, and the reason can be seen in the reference manual. Let's understand the auto reload register. So when we enable the timer, the counter starts counting from zero. Since I have set up the timer clock at 1 MHz, each count of this counter will take 1 microsecond. This counter will continue counting, and the maximum count that can reach is the auto reload register value. So this is why, we need to set the maximum value for the ARR, so that our counter can avoid reaching that value. Now we will enable the timer, and wait for the update flag to set. In order to enable the timer, we need to look in the control register 1. As you can see the zeroth bit of CR1 register enables the timer counter, 
so we need to write a 1, in the 0th position. For the update flag, we will check the status register. Bit 0 is the UIF bit. And you can see, this bit is set, when the content of the register are updated. So we will wait for this bit to set. This completes the timer configuration. Now this function here is the function to generate the delay in microseconds. Basically, we will set the counter to zero, and wait for the counter to reach the entered value. As I have already mentioned that, our setup is in such a way that each count takes one microsecond, so this will result as delay in desired microseconds. Now let's talk about the GPIO configuration. I will blink the onboard LED, and to do that we need to set the pin as output. We all know the LED is connected to pin PC13. The steps are very simple. Enable the GPIOC clock. And configure the pin as output pin. Let's enable the GPIO clock first. We need to go back to our CC registers. As you can see in the APB2 enable register, 4th bit controls the port C clock. To enable the GPIOC clock, we will write a 1 in the 4th position. Next step is to configure the pin as output. And to do so, we will go to the GPIO registers. The first one here is the port configuration register. This register is responsible for configuring the mode of the pin, and its type. As you can see here, the first two bits set the mode for the pin, and the next two bits configure that mode. Similarly the next four bits controls pin 1 mode, and its configuration. This register is divided into two parts. Control register low is responsible for controlling bits 0 to 7. And since we are using PC13, we will go to the control register high. Here we will set the output mode. You can choose the speed according to the requirement. I am choosing 10 MHz speed. So in order to set the pin 13 as output, we need to write 0 and 1 to the 21st and 20th positions. Basically write a 1 at the 20th position in the CRH register. Now for the configuration, we are using output mode, so these will be valid. I am choosing push-pull type output, as it's better for blinking LED, so I need to write zeros in the 22nd and 23rd positions. These positions are zero by default, so I am not writing anything there. Then we have port bit set or reset register, which we will come to in a while. This completes the configuration for the GPIO. Now let's write our main function. First of all call the GPIO config. Then call the timer config. Now inside the while loop, we will turn the LED on and off. To do that we need to see the BSRR register. 
This register is divided into two halves. Bits 0 to 15 can be used to set the pin. And 16 to 31 can be used to reset the pin. Since we are interested in pin 13, in order to set this pin, we need to write a 1 in the 13th position, and to reset the pin, we need to write a 1 in the 29th position. Let's set this pin PC13. Now we will give some delay here. I will use this delay ms function to set the delay in milliseconds. Set the 1 second delay. Now reset PC13 by writing a 1 in the 29th position. And give 1 second delay again. This is it. Let's build it now. We don't have any errors. Before uploading, make sure you make changes in the options here. Let's upload it now. As you can see the LED is blinking every one second. This means the clock setup, the timer setup and the GPIO setup, everything went well. This wraps up the basic configuration needed for the blue pill. You can use the same configuration in other videos as well. I will continue making these videos for F4 series, but I will upload the code for blue pill also. If there are too many changes in the process, I will make a separate video for Blue Pill for that particular peripheral. You can support this channel by joining the membership plan. The download link for this code is in the description. That's all for this video. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.